nightmare. Hello and welcome to Cinema Subculture, the podcast where we discuss everything strange, obscure and downright messed up in the world of movies. My name's Gary. And I'm Simon. This is episode 34 and we are discussing Don't Go in the House, directed by Joseph Ellison. Yep. 1980. Right eye. Yeah, right eye. Okay, um, so... Let's get started on this film, Gary. It's one of the video nasties. Um, Dropped 33. Sorry? Yeah, it's one of the dropped titles, but sure, still right. classes as a nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, give us a synopsis for this one, Gary. <clears throat> Can't remember your man's name. Uh, Do- Donnie. Bobby. Donny. Bobby. Oh, I can still let you go, shouldn't I? <laughs> oh, that would have been great. I know Bobby's his name. <laughs> what's the what's the, the pal's name? Uh, Is he not Bobby? No. Aye. <laughs> um Ben, I think. Oh, right, okay. No, no, no. Wait a minute, there's no. a Bobby. Oh, Ben's the guy that goes on fire at the beginning. Aye. He's second oh it's an other appearance. Yeah, so it's Bob Bobby. Aye, right, it's it's Bobby. Aye. Oh, I should like call him base <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> Bobby Bobby says to Bobby. Here Bobby. You know, one of right. the ones. Right. So Donnie is a troubled young man. He works yeah. at an uh, incinerator. Yeah. Um, he's only there one day, to be fair. But what? in the film, he's only there one day. Is it? Oh, you only see him there once. Well, I, uh, yeah, I'm guessing he works here. But, aye. Um, ah. Maybe just doing contract a work. You know, yeah, he has a few hours here and the He's few not hours sure there. about it because he doesn't like the fire. Probably wants to do the rest of his life. Yeah. You know? Um, doesn't like fire much well it's a funny place to work <laughs> no, no, no in a funny well, way though no, no, he's, laugh, he's, laugh got, he's got a love hate relationship Aye, with his boss. Yeah. Aye, he's, uh, yeah, 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 yeah yeah and his boss is like oh you're a fucking you're a fag <laughs> he's like I'm not a fag <laughs> And he's like, uh, you know, just don't like burning things. Aye, I don't mind burning things. But I just don't want to help him. Um, so uh, yeah, one day um, one of his co-workers gets set in fire how did that happen? But I remember thinking this at the beginning of the film, but I never thought about it again. Now, sorry to interrupt you, but the canister of of um, flammable blowy uppy stuff. Aye, it's in the is in, in the, the thing. Is that? But they Donnie... don't see it. No, I'm like, no. Is that but he's got a there? mask on, so it's maybe, oh, it's maybe right. like darkening it a bit. You know, yeah, yeah. glasses do. How did that get in there? Um, was that Donnie that put it in there? Because he's looking at it at first. Oh, and right. the, the guy goes, "Here, you, you cunt, get out of the road." <laughs> <laughs> and he says, "I'm no a cunt." And then it's like, you know, that's his kind of thing. Don't call him names. And he says, "I'm no one of them." That's the whole way the film goes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, right. Yeah. As you're saying. So yeah, but um, it goes so boy, up. Eh? It does, Good guy bang. gets set in fire, yep. um, but Donnie's kind of paralysed by it, he doesn't help out, and Aye. he gets uh, lambasted by his co-workers for, for just uh, standing idle. No Bobby though, Bobby does. Well, uh, Bobby takes a, a shine to him and says, he's probably just froze there, um, it's a common thing. Um, so, um, uh, we find out uh, Bobby's got, no, Donnie's got kind of a, 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 a troubled relationship with his mother. Right. Uh, sort of a dominating, dominating mother. Yeah, that's uh, definitely. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Tortured him. Well, he was, uh, if he was a bad boy when he was younger. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's his sort of troubled relationship with fire. Yes. He would uh, hold his hands, his arms over the, the stove there. Uh, gave him a wee burn. A gas stove? A gas one, I think. You only get gas, no, you don't get like coal. No. Hmm. That's fine. Yeah. Aye. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> can run through the whole film here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um. And he gets himself into all kinds of scrapes and stuff. He scams, does so. so His yeah. mother dies. Oh, um, so no. then he's sort of liberated from the. Yeah. The discipline of of his mother's. Um, Tyranny. Yes, indeed. Um, but. Um, it leads down some troubled paths aye, uh, aye. for old Donny. I mean, it's what's that? We'll go. We'll just dive in. That was a good synopsis. Right. It was basically the whole film. It's like yeah. trailer. Effectively, <laughs> he was a man with a mother, and his mother died, and then he set people on fire, and then people stopped him. So, Donny was a troubled man. Anyway. Yeah, like he starts off like he's hearing voices in his head. Mm. Um. And they're like, and he's like, I can listen to my music loud. Yeah. I was going to text you that when I was watching right. it. I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> and, he, and he just whacks it right up. And it goes for that. 
we should maybe well I would have counted on maybe a scale of maybe a five or a six on a normal person scale. Right. But once you see what it gets to, it's like, it's like minus one or something like that. Right? Because like, it goes right up to fucking ten. Right. Like, straight away, he's like, I'm going to kidnap women and burn them. <laughs> right. That's the yeah. same, isn't it? But as well as turn the music but he, up. But he doesn't have the music up loud when he's burning them. Right, no, Because no, that no. would have been perfect. There's like, fucking whack that bastard up. <laughs> you know, and then he's smoking. Right, yeah, yeah. Out, Jumping out. in that chair. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. See? And then he's rocking just back and forth. Like, no, they don't even tell me that I'm going to fall backwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, oh, he goes off. He's just, he's out of hand. So he has, mm. That Mrs. Scholar is need to get him sorted out. Oh, no, she's dead, isn't she? Mm. So he comes home and she's dead. And he freaks the fuck out, doesn't he? Mm. I think he, it's like he calls 911, but then, then he just hangs up. Right. But he's like, I could. Going to have like a piece in if I wanted. Right. Don't have to ask her and put the music on. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know, he's, he's definitely a damaged young boy. Yeah. Um so what did you think? Yeah, I didn't really care for it. Um it's a funny one. It was um nineteen eighty, so it's your pre just pre Friday thirteenth mm-hmm. slasher boom. Mm-hmm. Um so um, there's a funny, there's a story I heard about uh, the director, um, how he didn't really real, realize he was making such a, a downbeat uh, piece of work, um, and the film was in the theater at the same time as Friday the Thirteenth, right? And he went into to sort of see it, and he went into the the theater for Friday the Thirteenth, and like everyone was going crazy and having a great time, um, screaming and stuff, and then he went into his film like. Dead silence and like nobody was into it. It's like, and you thought, all right, I've kind of messed this up here. That's <laughs> <laughs> not the film I thought I was making, but um, yeah, it's got uh, it's really uh, it's lacking a sort of sense of humour. Um, that the that you know I'm associate with slashers and the sort of the boom that came, which was kind of tongue in cheek. Even like Halloween's got a, mm-hmm. a bit of that. It, um. So, it just kind of, it's quite a depressing watch, isn't it? It's like... Yeah. I mean, does that come from, like, you're, you've mentioned Friday the 13th and, and, um, and Halloween, and those are, like, teen films, mm, teen slashers, yeah. you would say. Whereas this is, like, a kind of guy in, he's maybe, like, mid-30s, like mm. early 40s, maybe, something like that, around about that age, and he's got a shitty job, and it's he's the main character, you know, whereas like Friday the Thirteenth and and and, and um, Halloween, it's not really the character right. the killer that's the main character. Yeah. So it's kind of like seeing it from it's ju- it's more like look at this, watch this as this guy goes mental mm. and 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 like because he's so traumatized from when he was a wee boy. Yeah. And it's it's really like oh my god, like what it's the it's the um the descent of this man into madness rather than let's watch these bunch of like pretty teens get the fuck yeah. up <laughs> you know it's um, not exactly the good time that, <laughs> that those films are you know um uh, yeah i mean there's, there's there's one scene that's kind of funny that's and I, it feels as if it's, it's maybe been trying to be him the, the comedy part of the film it's when he goes and buys his disco outfit oh yeah that's, right, that's yeah, really good i, guess, that, I, yeah. I like that scene um, with the with the guy and he's telling him what his shirt and he shows him the plaid shirt and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know something about that just that that tickled me a wee bit. And the matador shirt, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh yeah, yeah. I heard of this one. <laughs> you know, I don't know why that just really got me. Aye. Um, and then the way he's, he says, "Does this look good?" And and the guy goes, they "Look very serious," and he's look too serious in his face. He's like, "You're gonna look dynamite." <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, that guy's creepy. That guy's creepier than the guy that's doing the murdering. Um, um, the guy looked pretty sharp in his suit. I liked this. I liked it. Sorry, did, yeah. that's back. You know what I mean? That's back. That looks good. Really yeah, yeah. looks kind of back. Um, yeah. So you had moments of sort of lightness, and then he goes to the club, and the the sort of um, the best the the Bobby character huh? sort of he's quite funny, sort of trying to get him to lighten up in that. Mm. But then you, f- I that liked him. I quite liked him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like, um, he was like sort of like a Kevin Bacon kind of Friday Thirteenth character, you know, kinda right? A bit lighter in tone. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you have the kind of really quite dark uh, scenes of things like when he sets somebody's hair in fire. Um, there was a candle at her face. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, mm, 
guess he's, he, he, the director was going for something horrifying, but mm. it doesn't quite... Um, it doesn't quite work. I don't know exactly why. I don't know if he... If you're going to do a serious horror film, uh, then you need to set the tone differently from the start, maybe. Or... Well, it felt a little jumbled to me. It felt like it... The film feels like the film feels like much a, a much more serious film. Yeah, it, that's trying to be more serious, right? With the the themes in it and what's going on, but the way it's actually played out is somewhere in between, mm. like the kind of more like light slasher tone. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's but it, it comes across as feeling quite, I don't know, like very. Like just underplayed, you know. It's kind of like you know, it's kind of like a bad psycho. Isn't yeah, it? Well, that, that's it. Yeah, that, as soon as he, as soon as he said he's sick mother, yeah, I'm like, this is a and in the house. I is even so, like is a, even a, shots which are but kind of directly lifted mm. almost. Um, but that, that's what it, it felt like it was. It, it didn't know whether it wanted to be psycho or like Halloween. Code, yeah, you know what I mean? or like a slasher film. Um, uh, and I, I feel that it, it it went right in between instead of committing to one or the other. Mm. Mm. Um, and that that's why I think the tone feels so weird. Yeah, maybe. Um, it didn't really have any depth, so but it wasn't quite fun enough to be just a yeah, uh, yeah sort uh-huh. of run the mill slasher. Um, so yeah, particularly the the first uh, kill scene mm-hmm. is even is quite quite strong as well. Mm-hmm. Um, um, that was kind of the major thing that was cut. Uh, that was kind of caused the controversy about the film originally. Um, so what happened? He, he goes to a flower shop to get some mm-hmm. flowers, um, or is it just abduct the women? I guess. Well, see, that's the thing. It's it's weird because it's played later on. Like that's not what he was trying to do. It was more like when they disrespected him, but from you know that he was taking action because they were evil. But that you know, like ah uh, right, you know, because that seemed to be what the, the fire was all about was burning out. All oh, right, the evil yeah. out of them. But none of the cats had done really anything evil until, and you see when he goes in and speaks to the the cor- their corpses later on, he says about like, inviting them into his house and and then they disrespected him like when she wants to use the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Are you asking my permission? Yeah. Um. So that seems to be his excuse for doing it, but I don't know how he makes the leap. I don't know. How, I really don't know how he get, makes the leap from. My mum's died and she kind of abused me hmm. to now I'm going to like kidnap and torture women. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I guess, I mean, it's like a psychosis, whatever, but like, it just seems like, like, see, you made me do this. You know what I mean? It didn't, hmm. it didn't seem to connect for me. Hmm. It seemed a bit odd, but uh, yeah, that, that the first, the first murder seems very really strong. It's, 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 it's like something out of a different film. Hmm. Um, but when it gets to the like the I think the third victim, I mean, we won't, won't really see one graphic, yeah, like scene like that. Um, but when you get to like, the third victim, and he corners her in a like, a store, like, a quick stop or something, you know, like in a like twenty four seven, and um, he's at the till and he goes, "You want me to carry that for you?" Oh, and yeah. then she's like, "No thanks." And he's like, "I've got a car. Will I give you a ride home?" <laughs> and she's like, "No, like just get it away." And then and then <laughs> she goes away and he's. The guy's like, can I can I help here? And he's like, oh, I must have scared her off. I'll go and apologize <laughs> to her. And I'm like, what are we doing? Like, what's he even trying to do? He's not even like, right? You know, it just what the character thing. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. So that's like, not gonna work, pal. No, well, that loves that, but it just seems like I don't understand what you what you're you're doing this. For, oh, right. Like you're for or yeah. mm. or um, like if you're gonna do it, do it like clever. Right. I guess it's maybe meant to be like it's kind of schizophrenic or something. Yeah. Because I mean, it doesn't voice, quite make sense it. that he's got the the kind of torture chamber uh-huh. built already. <laughs> I guess <laughs> it's ready yeah. to go. That's if true. He suddenly I never, decides, I never thought uh, of that. He wants to become a oh, psycho. Oh, uh, psychopath. Um, I never thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it's like the Batman thing. He just finds it down below. Oh, his house. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, ah. Oh. I yeah. might be the mothers. Who knows? I will. But no, I never thought about that. But it's odd. The voices in his head seem to be telling him what to do, mm. and then even with that, he seems to have 
the voice of his mother shouting at him sometimes, mm-hmm. um, which seemed to be scolding him. But then he seems to see his mother and his, the people that he's killed like in visions and in dreams. So he's obviously having some sort of guilt about doing this. Right. And then at the end, obviously, they, 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 it seems like they're, they come back to life to attack him. But I guess that's just in his head. But the weird part for me like of the ending was that what then all of a sudden we cut to like, another random wee boy who's being scolded by his mother for being for not coming when she's shouted him. Yeah. Not even a not even a patch on what he got. Like, as in, like, he literally got burned <laughs> for doing something naughty. And this wee boy who's just been a wee fucker and not came to the dinner table. And she's like, don't you ever not listen to me again. I had worse when I was away. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like, right? And um, suddenly, the voices are talking to him. Yeah, and nah, that was horrible. Um, but the only thing I could think with that was the wee boy's name was Michael. And I'd, I wondered if there was some sort of... Uh, are, we, are they trying to set us up as some sort of prequel to Halloween? Um, You know, that was the only thing, I, the only thing that I could think that there the, the, was a reason to have that wee boy there. Right. Because I couldn't understand, unless these voices are meant to be something supernatural. Or is it is just it, saying don't abuse your children? Is it Donnie that's talking to the kids? Kinda. In his head? Yeah. No. No, it's, no, it's, it's the same voice. voices that are talking to Donnie. Oh, right. Kind of female, kind of weird Yeah, voice. well, the last show is kind of the same last show as Psycho, isn't it? Mm. Uh, yeah, where it's like going into um, yeah. Norman Bates' face. And, and that's got the voice. Yeah, that's got the, the voice, voice of his mother. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's funny, like, he suddenly uh, decides, all right, this is, film has a moral message about don't abuse your kids. Um, it's very. It seems kind of insincere. It's mm-hmm. like you've just made a kind of quite a a strong a horror film with some strong uh, violence there. So it's it's not quite. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna buy you as a sort of a uh, um someone that's gonna give me a moral. D- yeah, moral yeah, you know I mean? d- yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, that was the only thing I could think that about with some sort of kind of. Nudge and wink to the Halloween franchise. Mm. I, I couldn't think of any other reason for it because it just seemed so like kind of not connected with the rest of the film because it seemed to be a very personal thing to to Donnie and it was his whatever you know had traumatized him. Mm. Um, and suddenly we've got this other random wee kid who's watching the house having burnt down on TV. <laughs> and suddenly hears the voices. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, it just seemed like what? what? <laughs> you you really want a sequel to this, don't you? you know, that's, or or something? Uh, yeah, I guess so. But even so, like, what were they going to do? Like, wait like ten years to do a sequel to that wee boy was up and growing? Right. I don't know. I just didn't sit with me, but <laughs> um, <clears throat> nah, none of it was particularly well done. Uh, it was kind of what I was expecting, but I did expect to have more of a laugh with it. Yeah. Mm. The 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 fun scene were more like at the beginning when he was working he should have went to work more that's what happened yeah yeah, yeah. That, was, that was kind of funny and stuff um, <laughs> um yeah the only interesting scene I thought was there was one sort of dream sequence mm-hmm. that was good um, <clears throat> that was quite cool but the, um, the explosions and stuff like that yeah was that was that was cool um, um apart from that it was just pretty plodding um wasn't really much to to enjoy Nah, it was it was weird. It was it was as if it wanted to be like kind of like a kind of as you say a psycho clone, but try to do something different that just didn't work. Mm. Yeah. But, cool. Um. So, <clears throat> what about the cuts? Do you have any anything on the cuts? I do. I um. Well, for the original cinema uh, release in 1980, it was passed for an X certificate um, after the cuts were made to the first uh, burning scene. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, well, according to Melon Farmers, there were both versions, the uncut version and the cut version, were un- were released by the same company uh, on VHS in the pre- both preset. Right. So I don't know why they did that. There was no need to release the cut one. Then it was added to the Nazi list in July nineteen eighty three, and then dropped in March nineteen eighty four. After it was agreed that it would only be the the cut version that would be distributed, um, on VHS. And then it wasn't till 
the Arrow DVD release 2012 that was finally released uh, uncut in the UK. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. It does say that in the back of the Aye. DVD, so I should have guessed that. But... Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I mean, I don't know if there's anything in here that... I mean, the, the first murder's pretty strong. Yeah. But, you know, when was like, the previous release you said, sorry? I think there was, if I remember, there was 83, and then there was, I think there was maybe one later in the 80s. Right. Another. But I and think that, that was, was, cut was as never well. released in DVD or VHS? Like no, that, it's uh, maybe just one that was never, nobody yeah, tried to put it out if it had been oh, well, put out so before. Much, I'm sure done. it would have been uncut yeah, as well. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, uh, interesting fact that um, the guy that plays Donny, uh, did you ever watch The Sopranos? Uh, I haven't seen it, no. No, oh, well, I never watched it, but it plays tw- the twins. All oh, right. Uh, Philly and Patsy Parisi. Right. In the, on the Sopranos there mm. you go there. Um, yeah final thoughts for this one um, no real reason to seek this out I don't think unless you're a super hardcore slasher fan um, <laughs> or if you must watch all the and as well uh, yeah as it's I mean as I've seen it's like pretty run of the mill it's mm-hmm. not really anything interesting um it's great that it's basically technically quite well made but it's pretty pretty dull um um pretty humorless mm-hmm. so um no i'd agree with that exactly what you're saying i don't really have anything else to add to that um really just i must i must see only if you're hardcore but you're video nasties or Or in general, but mm. um, cool. <clears throat> we'll call it there. So, welcome back to Random Shit. Spring Breakers two. Mm. Holy shit! Hey, then. Yeah, well, what was it Spring Breakers? Um, the second coming. Is that was called. Aye, the oh, second right. coming. It's called. It's like a bit of a weird one, eh? Like, yeah. Harry Green's not involved. Franklin's not involved. You you seen some of the stuff he's been saying about it? Like no, he, he no. was very vocal, basically saying that anyone gets involved with it's come, um, is it, basically calling it a like devoid of um originality or any kind of basically a sinking ship. He's called it. Um, mm. but the producers fired back at him saying like, because they've got Evan Welsh and stuff like that one. So Evan Welsh is um is writing it mm. supposedly. I don't know. I don't know the director. The director's been announced, but I can't. I, don't, I didn't know him right. from anywhere. I read it. I can't remember who it is now. But apparently, the the story, the plotline is it's Spring Breakers against some eco terrorists, which kind of sounds a little bit like I don't know, like something like Revenge of the Nerds or or like a National Lampoon's Spring Breakers. Right. You know. What, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um. Just, I mean. I could you could see why that film out of all of Kareem's films could be ripe for a franchise, mm. but again, going off of what people thought it was going to be, you know what I mean? The the, the film that they were thought that people, you know, when we went to see it and people were there, and we, I was like, mm. people think they're here to see like American Pie. That's right, what they think yeah. they're here to see. That film, if had it been an American Pie rip type th- comedy. Yeah, okay, I could see them trying to like wring every fucking last penny out of that franchise. Mm. But that's the only thing I can think that they're trading off of is like girls in bikinis with guns. Mm. And it's like, this is like, remember what you thought the film was? Well, that's what it was, <laughs> honest, it was. Yeah. No, um, I can't. I, 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 I'm, I'm intrigued to see it. I think I will watch it. I, I'm right. not the cinema, but I think I will watch it mm. because I'm quite like, can, how, where do they go? How do they do it? Yeah. I'm curious, is Everett Welsh definitely attached, or is it just like kind of speculation type thing? I think thing? it's definite. I mean, is it? I? Hmm. I mean, is it, but then it, that's not to say he'll be attached right through, you know, yeah. you know he's maybe attached at the moment. Because if it was like Spring Breakers and Leaf, and ah, right. ah, there we go. That <laughs> yeah. was, see, I could see that working. <laughs> yeah. That's a film Corrine would probably come back and direct. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, nah, I just don't know. It's, it's, it seems like such a kind of. Spring Breakers and the Skag Boys. When I, <laughs> when I when I saw it, um, I, I I really didn't know. I was like, what? I, I really couldn't believe it. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's, it's throwing me a bit of a loop. So I, I I'm interested to see it. I wish I wasn't, but I, I'm kind of want to see what they do with it. Mm. Like, see if they even try to like um get any. What's the word? 
like the tone or the, the style, you know. Right. There's um, they're, they're, they've apparently I don't know if they've cast or they've just got involved. Um, you know, there's a band called Pussy Riot. All oh, right. Yeah, because of their strong feminist voice or, or right. something. Um, that they've got them involved, but. Yeah, Spring Breakers, the second coming, it's called. Hmm. Have to wait and see, I guess. Anything else, Gary, you want to talk about? Well, there's a couple of Masters of Cinema announcements that oh, yeah. I was uh-huh. quite happy about. Um, they've announced they're putting out Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Sorry that, yep, yep. Uh, and Faust as Faust, well. Faust, yeah, that yeah. was one I was quite interested mm-hmm. in. Uh-huh. Um, they've had, they had that on DVD, didn't they? Faust, Faust yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think, I don't know if I had their one, I had one. Oh, all right. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, yeah, yeah. Pretty um, cool. it's a public domain film, so uh, it'd be good to get a kind of definitive release. Yeah, uh, I'm quite so keen like, to yeah. see uh, the cabinet of Dr. Cal- uh, mm. Cal- Caligari mm. because I've never seen it. Mm-hmm. Um, quite an interesting looking film from what from any of the things I've have seen from it. So yeah, have yeah. you seen it before? Aye. Yeah, it's good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. Um, uh, Faust as well, like, um. Like another Mandau title that they've got in the catalogue. It's one that I've been hoping to get upgraded for a while. It kind of went out of print, kind of, because um, I think it was a case of the, the fire destroyed their stock of that. Because uh, right. the DVD was like unavailable on their website and stuff, and it was going for like big money on Amazon. Mm. I was like, oh, damn, I missed it. Because um, it wasn't like announced or anything that mm-hmm. was going out of print. Um, but then now it's back. That's mm, good. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Anything you've picked up recently? Um, um, got Nymphomaniac, the artificial eye, mm-hmm. standard version, not the HMV exclusive. Mm. Did you see it in the store? The, the HMV. I one? did. Was uh, it alright? So I quit it. A nice slip, kind of, but case. nothing. Yeah. Was it quite expensive? Or? Sixteen ninety nine. Right. Although they had some good deals actually. Right. That I saw, they had like you know Ace in the Hole just come out uh-huh, from Master uh-huh. Cinema just like a few weeks ago, nine ninety nine. Hmm. I got it, Amazon pre order for eleven pounds. It was the cheapest price. Right. So oh. that was quite surprising because normally they they have those like nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. For that yeah oh, MOC as soon as they came out, they're always. Uh, they done on a few that were quite cheap as well. Um, so that's something. Yeah. Might check that out in the future. Um, breaking the waves. The Criterion came out. I uh, haven't got a chance to watch the film yet, but um, it was interesting that uh, they went back to the original reg- negative right. and scanned it at 6K. Cause, right, because it was that one that you said was... Because that was the one that had yes. the video processing. Yeah, so, um, right. So it's like a whole new film, kind of. Right. Um, so that's the reason you've got your 6K? DVD Holy version. Crap, 6K? Yeah, yeah. They just keep like they'll just like fucking throw another K on there. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's just like uh, standard twenty K. Yeah. <laughs> they'll never know. They've only got fucking thirty two inch tellies. <laughs> um, yeah. So approved by Von Trier, but it's a, a strange thing where he's kind of reimagined his original vision. Well, I mean, do you see that he, he transferred to to video to make it easier for the post produ- production? Well, it's it, more just to do a, like an aesthetic a, an edit. Price? I think. Yeah. Right. Um, so, but then he, th- he thought it looked quite good. Mm. Mm. So, oh, right, so you're saying that the DVD copy is like still yeah, that? Yeah, you've still got your video version uh-huh. from the DVD. Uh, mm. If you want to keep that, I think I'll hang on to mine yeah. just as a. But um, no, that's one that I've been I've been quite interested to see. So I've, yeah, yeah. Um, I've never seen it, so that's quite interesting mm. to know that though. But six K, that's kind of like. Although I saw an interesting uh, interview with Wally Fister. Right. Uh, he was just talking about how, um, for him, thirty five mil was still superior because mm-hmm. they're saying you can shoot a 4k digital but if you're shooting like anamorphic widescreen he was saying that to really get the the resolution the digital equivalent would have to be 6k or even 8k just the amount that you can squeeze into a 35mm mm-hmm. frame mm-hmm. with anamorphic so didn't realise that but no yeah, yeah. that's interesting yeah like um, I want to talk something else then that we're doing a bit it's, it's more than a mini right. random <laughs> shit here um did you see two fingers crossed here because I'm trying to remember a like, fucking thingy from It's a Wonderful Life I've got my string on my finger <laughs> um, did you see what was it Transcendence 
Uh, yeah, I saw some of it. Um, I think. Didn't look that good. I saw the trailer and I was like, "That's that. I don't like that at all. Like, mm. it seems very, It seemed like what? The, it seems like a film I'd seen already. Mm. You know, it felt right. very kind of like a a quantum leap esque level of TV right. concept. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, it didn't appeal to me at all, which was a shame because I was quite interested to see what he was going to do. Did he shoot it? No. 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 Uh, right. I don't know how the cinematographer was. Um, yeah, so I was kind of disappointed that when I saw the trailer, so I was hoping that the film might have been better, but mm. than what the trailer was implying. Mm-hmm. Mm. I, I like Wally Fist, I do, I think he's he's quite impressive, and I like his, his love of IMAX, mm. which brings me to the other point I was going to bring, um, is, has 3D killed IMAX, do you think? Um, Like pure IMAX, you know, just IMAX. Like, You're talking about the proper IMAX? Well, or... <clears throat> there's two two parts of the conversation because, right, yeah, we'll go with it. We'll go with the first part first, right. which is what I was meaning was that, like, even I think it was the last film I went to see that I could have went and seen an IMAX that had, had IMAX stuff shot was Star Trek Into Darkness, right? Oh, right, okay. Um, obviously, it's a space film and ripe for, like, you know, IMAX visuals, right? But they post processed it into three D and they weren't doing any IMAX two D. Right. right. Even at the I think it was still um like film projection that they were doing at the the Brayhead. No, Science sorry. Center. Science Centre, yeah, sorry. Yeah. In Glasgow. It may not have been because I don't know if they they changed over when they changed over to three D. Um but anyway, let's say it was it was still film projection. So there was no option to go and see that film in 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 two D. Mm. So I didn't go to see it, and I feel that that's they're doing that with a lot of films, even films that haven't been shot in, in IMAX. Or, you know, they convert it instantly to IMAX two D. Mm. Um, I just like I didn't want to see it because I was like, well, I, I'm very against seeing films that haven't been shot in three D anyway. Or you know, if if a film's shot in three D, I'm like, okay, well, they've gone to the effort, so they wanted something from this. I'll I'll go and see it if mm. I get the chance to. Um, but generally, if it's been converted, I don't really, I'm not really bothered about it. Um, and it's the same with IMAX. If if something's been shot in IMAX, I'm, I'm like, well, I want to see that stuff because, I mean, after seeing like the Dark Knight and, and you know the Dark Knight Rises in IMAX, I'm like, that's, it's epic. You know, it's mm. what what a, a a platform to see a film. You yeah, know, yeah. especially with those visuals. But for that for the Star Trek one, I was like, I'm not going to go and see it because I don't want to see it in 3D. Uh, right. um, so it kind of ruined it for me. You mm. know, and and that was kind of a waste because I've spent all that money shooting on these IMAX cameras mm. and then they've spent loads of other money stupidly to convert the 3D and then kind of wasted the, the experience so with that 3D projection that seems to have also I don't know if that's been co- you know connected to the, the switch over from film IMAX projection to digital IMAX projection do you think so that, that's my that's my thing you know, um, do you think it's I think it's come from I'm not sure because 3D is kind of peaked anyway i think it has but um, it seems to still be clinging on you know right. i would like, say that, 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 that it's more just the general switch to digital projection just for mm. um expense costs mm. um so like i guess the science center was like underfunded or whatever and then like cineworld's come in and said yeah. all right we'll run it but uh, we want digital projection mm. yeah. which okay right I, I, that you know you can understand the the logic behind how to do that uh, to an extent, but I, I just feel like the the fact that they don't offer any two D screens of like, IMAX yeah. films, <clears throat> it just seems like it's just that seems to be the last bastion of like the three D still gets hooks into. You know, if a film's released in three D, it's and IMAX three D, and it's like give me a break. You know, mm. it's just I'm not wanting to see it in three D. Mm. But I want to. I'd like to see some films, especially when they're shot in IMAX. You know? Aye. it just seems like a total waste of the format. You know, which was like probably. I, I was just starting to get really excited about IMAX. Right, yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and they seem to have kind of whipped it away from us. Mm. Because you, you, everybody's had the, well, I've had definitely had the experience of going to like a cinema, um, a regular cinema, and like, you know, like this looks shit. That, you know, it doesn't look as good as it looks at home mm. on, on my TV. But IMAX wasn't that. IMAX was always quite, was very impressive still. Yeah, you know, yeah. it was still the giant screen. Mm. Um, and I don't know, it just seems to have kind of ruined it that experience for me a wee bit yeah 
um, which is a shame because as I say it was definitely something that you could we we, sp- we spoke about or we have spoke about um 3D being that thing that you can only get at the cinema mm. so that you know for right, a certain, for a certain point until they made TVs and it's like they're always looking for you know, the, mm. the 48 frames per second mm. and things like that whereas IMAX was that thing because you could get a, a version of it at home but it wasn't it was still just widescreen right yeah you know they switched the aspect ratios but you weren't getting there was no way to really get that experience at home um hopefully it'll go away hopefully it'll go away and we'll get IMAX back again right mm. even if it is digital IMAX it'll mm. still be if it's still they do it right you know if they shoot it yeah if it's a high enough um yeah. digital resolution mm-hmm. it's the right yeah. uh, ratio screen and all that yeah yeah it's better than nothing mm-hmm. um but um is interstellar is he doing any imax i think well that? it's not fist that's that's shooting that into not it's um the guy that shot let the right one in yep Nolan filmed Interstellar and and with anamorphic thirty five mil and IMAX film photography. Oh, right. film photography. Um, IMAX cameras were used for Interstellar more than any of Nolan's previous films. Nice. So, um, he had practical locations built rather than use um, computer generated images imagery. Nice. Holy crap. Some sequences of the film were shot with an IMAX camera installed in the nose cone of a Learjet. Quite interesting. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's that's that, if that film comes out, I mean, surely to God, no one has the, the fucking whack to say, like, don't put it in 3D, you dicks. Yeah, yeah. Surely to God, he if anyone has that kind of like non-3D dick to throw mm. in the table, mm-hmm. it's, it's him. You know what I mean? He's like, did you see fucking Batman? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, that's all he has to say. Um, so hopefully to God we'll, we'll get that in, in in IMAX even if it is digital but without the 3D sticker. Yeah. Maybe we start handing out the glasses on the way. Oh, it's right. another two pound. <laughs> <laughs> um, Did you see the second trailer? I haven't seen the second trailer yet. For it. no, no. I only saw the t- it was only a teaser. I think I saw right, the okay. one with Matthew McConaughey's voice over the top right, of it, I... and you see him a bit. But yeah, I, I'm, I've got reservations, but um, mm. I don't know if I buy uh, McConaughey as a space. Spaceman, but <laughs> uh, space see, because it, the, the, uh, it's only at the very end of the the trailer, like you see him going into space. Right, it just looks like a kind of a uh, drama, sort of standard kind of sci-fi drama right. at the start. But um, maybe I need to get a bit more to. to yeah, get I mean, what what is? The, do you know anything about the story? Is it is run out of food or something? The Earth is run out of food, so right. they have to move to another planet. I believe. Okay. Hmm, does this yeah, it seems a bit like uh, And he has to go and find a suitable planet, I think. Idea. Feels a bit uh something you'd see on the horror channel. Right. Or, or you know or the sci fi channel. Hmm. <laughs> you know, one of those kind of like made for T V films, the the plot, you know. Yeah. Is that what he's doing? Like kinda um... let's make this legit. Maybe. Let's make this shit legit. Yeah, well, I guess all sci-fi, if you boil it down... No, kinda, yeah, yeah, I guess. It's, it depends on the execution, sure. Aye. Just just when you describe it like that, and, yeah, and yeah. When you throw that in with saying, I don't find him as a spaceman. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it seems a bit... But Yeah. I, I'm, 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 I'll always go and see his films. I mean, I'll give him a chance. And it's written by him and, and Jordan Nolan again, so I mean, mm-hmm. it's got to be worth something. They always, I mean, it's the same if you described um, the prestige. Mm. It's basic terms. You'd be like, all right, okay. But still an excellent film, you yeah. know? It's so, or like Memento as well. Mm. It's a guy that forgets stuff all the time. <laughs> 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 kind of mind fuck all now again. <laughs> He's just writing it all over his body. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of Random Shit, I think, right. Gary. That does. I think so. Yeah, welcome return. That's enough random shit today for five episodes as well. It is indeed. We've had more random shit than the episode. But, nice. Um, Maybe we cut, cut something up. Aye. Uh, so, Gary, before we kind of wrap up this episode, I wanted to mention um, something that we're planning to do. Um, I mentioned to you, it's, it's, we're, we're a bit late in this now, but obviously we, we, we escaped a couple of weeks ago and then we've been kind of doing episodes and whatever. But... Um, I think it's fair to say that both of our first exposure to Batman would have been the the 66 series, would that be? 
Um, Earliest. Mine's, mine's definitely always. That's the first time I kind of became aware of Batman. Well, I saw the film before the series. So you'd never, you'd never seen the, the Adam West series before the film? I, I don't think it was really... But it might have been on TV, but... It used to be on a lot of time, like, you know, like kind of weekends and, and stuff right, like that. Right, possibly I, then. <clears> but um, I don't know if there was like any cartoons kicking about. Mm. Um, I'm sure I was aware of Batman mm-hmm. before that. Well, some... well my like, first kind of, like, I'm sure, because like, my, my papa was quite into like, the old Star Trek and and, and, um, and like Batman, like, it, would, it would be on, you know, and like, you know. Um, so you can probably cut that out because that doesn't matter and that's the, no free fix to right. it at all. <laughs> um, it's fair to say, Gary, that you and I are, are, are both, uh, we both appreciate the um, William Dozer, Dozier and the Adam West Batman series yeah. for what it was and is, you know, is, which is kind of like a sat- satirical take on, on the Batman lore and, and um, pretty fun, mm. you know. Um, well, in, in, in the march there, um, Lorenzo Semple Jr., um, the the basically the, the guy that wrote the pilot for that show and was one of the key writers in the whole thing and, and wrote the movie and things, um, passed away <clears throat> at 91. So, I mean, well done, 91, that's pretty good. But <clears throat> I thought it might be kind of interesting as we, we've done we've done all the rest of the Batman movies. Right. Mm. Um, and we left out the Adam West one at the time. Right. Mm. Um, I don't remember why we did. I think we just, because we're only doing the kind of the modern takes. Um, but I thought it might be interesting for us to maybe do like sort of kind of fun commentary type thing. Mm-hmm. People don't. Maybe do like a commentary on, right, yeah. on um, the Batman the movie from 66. Uh, so what we're going to do is, it'll be the next episode, but it'll be, you know, some some at some point we're going to sit down and um, and watch that and we'll, we'll, we'll let you guys link, sync up your DVDs or your Blu-rays, whatever, with what we're watching. And um, we'll go through that because I, th- I think there's there's some genius stuff in that film. Yeah. Um, that, that it's, I think it'll be fun for us to talk about. Okay. Um, if you're up for it, Gary, so that's one for our Batman fans to to look forward to. Um, what are we going to be looking at next on the podcast, Gary? Next Hopefully, episode? we're going to be looking at Guy Man's brand upon the brain. Okay, right, yes, cool. Uh, so we will, that'll be our next. That'll be episode thirty-five. Yeah. What's the date? Oh, right. Not mm-hmm. very. Right. <laughs> um, we'll do it for forty. Um, let's get for that. I think that was good. Um, yeah, so uh, join us for that episode. That's the only thing left to say, I think, is don't go in that house.